Hello and a warm welcome back on this windy day at the back end, where are we, August? Yeah, back end of August 2024. Today on the bench is the two 50 watt monoblocks parallel 807s driven by a 6B07 uh, long tail pair face splitter and a CV1135 V1 front end voltage amplifier. So today what I'm going to do, I'm going to finally stop pissing about with these amplifiers and fiddling with them. When I build an amplifier, whenever anybody builds any sort of new design, then it needs testing and tweaking, iterating. So like you get a version of a motorbike or a bit of software, you get version 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, 2 point whatever etc and they always need a bit of tweaking testing on the bench and then putting in the living room actually listening to the things making some changes going back and forth and this can take quite a long time but today what I'm going to do and try to just show you in detail ish is how to apply negative feedback even if you build an amplifier with a known design like something like a mullard 510 520 or any other amp like a williamson or whatever then the output transformer that you use with that design will to some extent probably need it will need the negative feedback tweaking because every output transformer is different so what do you need to test an amplifier for this job you need a dummy load which is this big blue thing here this is quite a big complex high powered one but you can just bong a few resistors on a heat sink and that will do the job just as well you need some way to measure the output of the amplifier and some way to measure the distortion the total harmonic distortion and if that can be done in decibels that's even better instead of having a big complex box like this you can get simpler distortion analyzers like the Marconi TF2331 I think it is um, I think HP made a few as well so you don't need a big complex box like this, box like this. or you can use a bit of software on a PC however to be able to do that you need a decent half decent sound card to go into your PC and you need some way to vary uh, to lower the output from the dummy load into your sound card so what I've got here it's a bit complex but I've got a 10 to 1 voltage divider so that can just be a 9k resistor and a 1k resistor for instance or something like that you go and do the maths i had to work it out you can do your maths it's pretty easy or you can just go and look it up on a pc anyway so you need some way to drop that voltage going into your sound card because sound card doesn't like 5 volts 20 volts up its arse once you've got all that, obviously you need your amplifier and then what I do, I use a 20k 10 turn precision pot but you could use something, I don't know, like a, just a one turn pot but that makes things harder to do, you really need a 10k uh, sorry a 10 turn precision pot and obviously it's a matter of getting the output from the amplifier and feeding that back into the front end of the amplifier so what I've got here I've got the blue wire coming out from the output and I've got this black lead here going into the front end and then I'm going to connect that 
pot up between the two and adjust it until I think well yeah it's about right an oscilloscope is also good because it allows you to see visually what's happening with the output and the amplifier however as mentioned you can also get the same sort of thing with a bit of PC software this is a bit of software called sound card oscilloscope it's if I may interject there old chap the next bit of filming you do is really crap so I'm going to refilm this is that okay Hi, bye Okie doke, this is sound card scope, as you can see we've got an oscilloscope, yes I know the trace is wandering, but that's just showing a sine wave, which is coming out of my HP 8903B, into the amplifier, into the dummy load, out of the dummy load, into the sound card, no, hold on, out of the dummy load, into the sound card, out of the sound card into the PC <coughs> yeah a bit complicated but it works so as you can see we've got a one kilohertz sine wave as mentioned sound card oscilloscope is easy to use no calibration it has a oscilloscope it has a signal generator which is low distortion and it has an XY graph. Also has oh, hold on, I've got that cranked up a bit there. Also has an FFT sort of function. Only goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So this is the uh, sort of limiting factor with a lot of cheap free software so as you can see we've got the FFT this is our one kilohertz tone this is a second harmonic three four five etc if I turn that up you should see those going up a bit so we've got quite a bit more second than third just here and at the moment um, that is the open loop no negative feedback applied what that looks like with negative feedback applied we shall see later but hopefully as you can see that illustrates what it can do if I just have a look what else I've got on here I, over the years I've um, downloaded quite a few different bits as mentioned this REW this Arta let me just have a look what else I've got what are we have oh right frequency response plot what's that like yeah so this one is something I pulled off a while back so you've got like a frequency response plotter fast Fourier transformer uh, what not yeah and we've got virtual sound canvas dxi oh there's another one right mock audio analyzer frequency response plotter as mentioned to rta arta so there you go there's a few suggestions of bits of various free software that you can download off the internet. I'm going to try and cover this subject in simple terms rather than getting bogged down in too many details. So first off why do we apply negative feedback in an audio amplifier? We apply negative feedback because it improves frequency response. Your noise, hum and noise, will be better. It can change the output impedance of an amplifier and a few other things but in a nutshell it makes it better however when you apply negative feedback to an amplifier it reduces the output power so usually 
we talk in terms of open gain, open loop and closed loop. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to crank this amplifier up and we'll see how much power we get out. So this is reading watts now. So we've got about right 26 right okay that was a bit of oh, shit you fucked up there and we'll start off applying a bit of negative feedback and just get a arbitrary amount of output power voltage coming out right we've got let's just set that to about six volts it's hard for me to film and get the scope and the audio analyzer in shot at the moment we're reading six volts rms out i'm now going to apply some negative feedback right ready you see the figure up there six volts and let me just zoom you in you see that figure that six volts drop so it's now dropped to 3.76 volts that would equate to how much of negative feedback negative feedback is running decibels so what we do you need a calculator 20 log our first figure was 6 divide that by let's call that 3.8 that equates to about 4 db of negative feedback So let's just keep applying negative feedback and see what happens. I'm going to point you now at the scope. Right, I'm going to point you at the scope rather than at the audio analyzer. I'm just going to keep applying negative feedback. See what happens. As you can see, the it's a bit hard to see if I just do that you will see the amplitude of that sine wave going down I'm really cranking the negative feedback up now just leave it there Can you see what's happening? Look, it's starting to dance about. Right. See what's happening now? It's going unstable. So, lesson one. If you keep applying negative, more and more negative feedback, the amplifier will go unstable. It just, yeah, it will turn into an oscillator rather than an amplifier because we've got too much feedback going into it. So obviously you can't just keep crank, uh, applying loads more negative feedback. There has to be a point where you stop. I'm not gonna get into this today, but once you've applied negative feedback to your amplifier, you really need to test it for stability. And that means testing it from 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz up and it involves hours and hours of testing and frequency sweeps and all that but we're not going to get into that so let's apply a bit more negative feedback and then have a look at the total harmonic distortion and the frequency response right i'm going to cut that there where are we 14 minutes 35 seconds i we'll cut that there rather than making interminable long-winded videos try and keep them short um 
been getting a few subscribers now and again it would be really nice if some of the subscribers um, with exotic names and things like that apart from the usual two or three sort of commenters that usually comment comment on the videos um, just whether it's a load of shit not bothered don't worry i can handle it if you think it's a load of crap or whether you're getting something out of them or just a thumbs up not bothered about you subscribing i'd rather you didn't subscribe but yeah just a little bit of negative um, well negative feedback or positive feedback would be nice sometimes just so i have an idea of yeah whether i'm sort of doing the right thing yeah whatever Anyway, cut it there, take care of yourselves, thank you very much, all of you, for watching, take care of yourselves, ta-da for now.